Now, what a lot of people don't realise, engineers and customers, that if a boiler breaks down under a warranty, the manufacturer can actually take a sample of the water, send it away to be analysed, and actually make a decision on whether it's the water quality within the boiler that has affected the boiler's performance. So they would check whether the water is too alkaline or whether the water is too acidic or whether the water is too hard. So whether you're an installer or a customer, you must make sure that the boiler is maintained and checked every 12 months. Now, back in April 2018, the government changed legislation on the controls for boilers. They introduced Boiler Plus, where all boilers now have to be uh, greater than 92% efficient. With the use of controls, it must go above 96%. So the HHIC, or the Heating and Hot Waters Industry Council, started to put into place changes to the benchmark scheme. Now the benchmark scheme is basically the commissioning procedure that engineers must carry out after installing a boiler. Now every boiler's manufacturer's instructions at the back has the benchmark sheet which the engineer must fill in. Now what they're saying is to protect the boiler that every boiler now when installed should have a magnetic filter in there to protect the boiler from magnetite and to help prolong the life of the boiler. So you shouldn't be fitting a boiler or you shouldn't be having a boiler fitted if it hasn't got a magnetic filter. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to be taking a sample of the heating system here in the training center and we're going to be doing some tests on it and we're going to be finding out what tests we need to carry out every year now on a service which is now part of the benchmark procedure and the manufacturer's instructions to check whether if this boiler did break down that the manufacturer would actually come out and fix it. Let's get on now with some of these tests and find out what we're actually going to be doing in this video. First thing we need to do before we take a sample of the central heating water is it has to run for a minimum of 15 minutes first. So we need to turn this boiler on. So we're now going to wait for this boiler to fire up. We're now going to wait for the central heating water to actually go around the system for at least 15 minutes and get up to temperature before we take this water sample. First test we're going to be doing with the sample water, but I'm not going to take any sample water from here where the magnet is. I'm going to be taking the sample point from down the other end at the furthest point away from the boiler at a, t a drain point. Is we're going to be doing a turbidity test. Turbidity, what's that? Well, basically, what it is is water which is cloudy, opaque, or it's full of um, some kind of suspended solids. So, what we're going to be using is this turbidity tube. I think that's how you say it, turbidity, that's how it's spelled anyway. And we're going to be using this which uh, Sentinel sent me for free, but you pay about 17, 15, 17 quid for them. So let's find out exactly what this turbidity tube does and why this will be our first test when we're checking central heating water before we install a boiler and when it's on the first service. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to Draw off a little bit of water first because we don't want to be taking the first bit from the valve because it could be dirty. So a few seconds to clear that out, need to get rid of that. Need to wipe out the container because we don't want it contaminated. Now remember you're going to be using, this is hot water coming out of here. So always be careful when you're handling hot water. So now we can take our sample. So now we've taken our sample, we need to go make sure the boiler is topped up and then we can uh, test this water. These are two samples of central heating water I've taken. So this one was from the boiler we did last week and this is from the training centre. So you can see, don't take a rocket scientist to see that that is mucky and that one has got like a yellow 
tint to it when you put it against a white background. So first of all, let's do this turbidity test and have a look and see what these turbidity tubes actually do. The first thing we need to do is we need to fill, as you can see, these tubes to above line A. So that's the first thing we need to do. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to look down through the tube to the circles down at the bottom and see if we can actually see if the circles are visible. The first one we're looking through is the one from the center. So this is the turbidity tube with the water in from the center. And you can quite clearly see the circles down at the bottom. So we can pretty much say that heating system is clean because if your water is above A and you can still see the circles clearly, and that means it's clean. If we look at this one, Again, you could see that they were both at the same level and we can't see this at all. So what we're going to do now is we're going to drop the water so it's between lines A and B. And let's see if we can see through the water. So you can see now I've dropped the water level between the A and the B max. So the A is there and the B is down there. So let's have a look now and see what we can see. And as you can see, we still can't see anything, any circles down at the bottom. It's just a murky bottom. So if we could see it between A and B, then we would class it as dirty, but we still can't see anything. So let's drop it below the B mark. So you can see I've dropped the water quite significantly down past the B mark because this is how much water there is in the tube so I can actually see the two circles. So let's have a look down the tube to see if you can just see them. And as you can see, we can literally just about see the two circles. So it says, if you can just about see it, it's very dirty if it's up to the B line and we are virtually down to the bottom. So that heating system we looked at last week was incredibly dirty. Now, hopefully, this is going to prove how important these magnetic filters are. So this is just the magnet out of one of the standard magnetic filters. I'm going to put it into the solution from the boiler from the other week, well the other day. I'm going to hopefully it'll go all the way in. And then hopefully what you should see is the water start to clear where the magnetite is being attracted by the magnet because basically this dirty water in this system is the steel from the radiators and other metals called magnetite. Now you can see it's taken a lot of that magnetite out of the water. It's still left it an orangey colour but uh, that's literally after a few seconds that's how much it's taken out. <laughs> Would you have thought there was that much in that little glass of water? So that just proves how brilliant these are and how needed they are on central eating systems. Testing this system water, this is incredibly important and this needs to be done every year or before the boiler is installed. And it's important that the engineer understands the results as well, it doesn't just rack up and strip out the old boiler and put the new one in because the magnetic filter isn't going to do everything. Every year the engineer and also before we install this boiler will need to check the water quality for first of all its pH level whether it's an alkaline or an acid. They will need to check the TDS which is the totally dissolved solids We'll also check the EC, or the electrical conductivity, and also the total hardness. So these are the checks. <laughs> We're now turning into chemists, not gas engineers. The easiest way I've found of checking most of these is by using these. And these are just test strips which you would use for a swimming pool or a, a spa. They're incredibly cheap. If you just buy water quality ones just for testing tap water, like three times the price. I think I paid 11 quid for this and there's 50 strips in this. So what we're going to do is we're going to test our heating water which has now had some of the magnetite or the iron oxide removed 
from there we've got our sample water from the centre and I've also brought in a bottle of uh, drinking water out of a bottle not out of the tap but you should be testing the tap water so this is going to be our starting point because it does actually give us a pH reading on here and it says its pH is 7.2 so that will test whether the strips are any good or not now one of the tests we're going to be carrying out on this water is the pH so what is pH? Uh, well pH is basically the how much hydrogen and a hydroxyl is actually in the water and it's a scale of 1 to 14 with 7 being neutral, 1 to 7 being an acid and 7 to 14 being an alkaline. So that's basically what the pH scale is and we need to be between 8 and 9 on the pH scale for central eating water to be correct. Um, we're actually looking for mixed metals of about 8.3. Um, now what do these, this test strip only goes up to for the pH of 8.4 so yeah we're looking between 8 and 8.3 really for our um, test. So this 8.3 is when the water is around about 25 degrees or so. So this water is just a little bit under that but uh, not far from it so it should be a good test. So what we need to do is we need to get the strips open. Now actually in these packets they come in packs of tens I think. So we've got a sealed packet which we need to open. And inside here we've got our individual strips. So we need three. So I'm going to open the water and as you can see it's sealed so this is uh, all the tap waters are available. Anyway so let's try and dip this in the heating water from the job we did. Now I need to put it in for two seconds but not spin it around and make sure it goes completely under the water. So we're in the water, one, two, and we need to leave it for a minute to work. So we're going to do the same with this one. One, two, and finally the bottled water. One, two. So we'll leave them for a minute and we'll come back to them and see what we've got. They've had a minute and as you can see this is what we have to test them against. So you can see down the side so that's our pH scale there and that's our colours. So we want to be between, we need a, a reddish colour but that's 7.2 for the drinking water needs to be an orange colour. So let's try the drinking water first. So there's a pH scale. pH is that orange colour. So it's a bit more than 7.2. It's about there according to that strip. It's definitely not 7.4. It's definitely not 7.2. It's more I would say around about there. So I don't know whether the strips are rubbish or not. All the water pH is more. So again if we look at the pH scale on here it's more of a reddy colour. So well, it's more that one. I don't know. It's rubbish when you're colour blind. It's definitely between those two figures. So that's the centre water. And if we take the one from the job, so you can see quite clearly, um, is it round about 7.2? Something like that. Anyway, that's what we've pretty much got from these test strips. Shall we look at the results then? I have them here. So the drinking water, chloride, nothing in it. pH, 
around about 8.4 even though the bottle says 7.2 and total hardness 1000 ppm the our heating went water here at the center again no chlorine in it so that was zero we have a pH level again of about 8.4 and then we've got less than 100 ppm for the total hardness and then for the job water again we had zero chlorine we had a pH of around about 7.2 with uh, a total hardness of zero it didn't show any hardness whatsoever that is the results of what we've come up with this heating water it's important to test the pH level and how hard the water is on the incoming mains for when we've got combi boilers because obviously if it's too high the total hardness we will end up getting the plate to plate blocked up with calcium so that's not what we want so remember if the incoming water supply is over 200 parts per million total hardness then you'll need to put a scale reducer in and the electronic scale reducers are the best ones so let's have a look at some more tests <laughs> What we're going to be using is we're going to be using this little test from Sentinel to see how much inhibitor we've got in there and this would be a test you would do on your service I don't know whether this is X100 in here or not could be another brand of inhibitor so we're also going to find out if this will pick up any inhibitor because they should really have the same ingredients shouldn't they really I do know this might have one less or one more than other uh, manufacturers of inhibitor but hopefully this test is going to prove that we've got inhibitor in there and what we use is this little color chart on the back which we're going to match up with our test so inside here we have a little test tube and we've got two lots of tablets one what says it's a number two tablet and the other one is supposed to be a number one tablet but doesn't say anything on the back we've also got a top in here so what we're going to do is we're going to fill one centimeter of water in here and then we're going to add the two tap one of each tablet in there and it should go yellow after 10 minutes i think it says wait 10 minutes yeah wait 10 minutes before so first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill this up to oh, a bit too much so we got about there so first of all i'm going to add one of these tablets now it does say wear gloves got any plastic gloves i'm allergic to latex as well so be careful with these, these tablets so it says add one from that one and one from this one Put the lid back on shake it up it's already going yellow you can see that so it says leave it for 10 minutes till everything has dissolved and um, but already you can see the difference there that it's a lovely yellow or well, going a yellow color so let's leave it for that 10 minutes now the 10 minutes are up, woohoo, look at that, now that is a lovely yellow colour. Now on the back of the box there is a colour matching chart which we have to match to and if I put them together I would say they're pretty much the same colour. One of the other tests we can do on our central heating system is this test. So again Sentinel have kindly sent me this system check. Now if we open it up basically what's inside is first of all this is a prepaid envelope to send back to Sentinel. They then give us two test tubes. One for your cold water mains and one for your system water and we're going to be sending this sample off to see what the results come back as so also in the pack you get system water and mains water stickers to stick on the bottles so you don't get them wrong we also get this sheet what we have to fill in which is all the details for the job 
So I'm going to be sending this off and um, we'll see what the results come back at. So I've got my two sample bottles. What I'm going to do is, I'll stick that back in, I'm going to put them actually back in with the uh, sheets which I've filled in. So I've filled all my information on there to send it back. So I'll put them in there and I shall put it in this prepaid envelope. There is some self-adhesive tape here to seal the bag up, just like that. But it's all sealed up, so what I can do tonight now on the way home is take that to the post office and get it posted off. And let's see what the results come back and let's see how long it takes for the results to come back. So today is the 2nd of September. 2020 and I'm going to be posting it tonight and let's see when the results come back. They've asked for my email address so I guess they're going to email me the results. The results are here. Now remember I sent this at 4pm on the 2nd of September 2020 which was a Wednesday. A lovely Wednesday because it hammered it down. And it returned yesterday which was Monday the 7th of September at 9.30 in the evening via an email. So that's when I received the email. So let's have a look at the results, shall we? It says they received it on the 3rd of the 9th, 2020. And it says the appearance has got a big green tick on it, so it looks good. The pH is good, and they've not put any comments in the boxes. It says conductivity, it's got a green tick, it's got calcium hardness, it's got a, a statement beside which it says main water hardness is low and would not normally cause limescale formation. Well I would expect it to be that because we're in the northwest. It says iron, got a tick, copper, got a tick, and it says aluminium, got a tick, but then it says X800 concentration. Now, you saw me pour it in part one into the magnetic filter and I circulated it around for about half an hour, something like that. And then I took the sample again, but they said the X100 levels are very high, possibly insufficient circulation before sampling. I know there was inhibitor in that system beforehand, but their test didn't pick it up. So whether they're now picking up other chemicals in there, I don't know. Now for the mains water down at the bottom, it says appearance has passed. It says it's clear and slightly turbid. What does that mean? Anyway. Hey Mr. Phone, what does turbid mean? Turbid means of a liquid cloudy, opaque or thick with suspended matter. It says its pH is 6.7 and it should be between 6.5 and 8.5. So that's good. It says its conductivity is a pass. It says it's calcium hardness. It said mains water results is 22 and it says system water results was 21 and it says minimum 75% of mains unless treated with sufficient Sentinel X100. So I guess that's a pass then. It then says copper 0.17. So it says one maximum if treated with sufficient Sentinel X100. So that must be a pass because we got 0.17. It says aluminium, it says zero because they're all stainless steel heat exchangers on that system. And then it says Sentinel X100 7.13 and it says a minimum of 1%. So we've got a massive amount of Sentinel by just pouring it into that test point. And I did circulate it round, it wasn't a dodgy test at all. That's the results what have come back from Sentinel. Now then, if you want to buy one of these tests, they cost £72. That's the cheapest I could find it. And then plus fat, 72 quid. So thanks Sentinel for sending me that, because 72 quid, that's a lot of money. Oh yeah. <laughs> Before we go and start doing the job, we better find out what's actually in here, don't we? So, let's open the box and see what we got. Well, the first thing we've got is a bag, which is 
the prepaid envelope, which needs to go back to Furnox. So a nice plastic bag. And what else have we got? We've got a bottle by the looks of it. Yeah, we've got, we just got a bottle. So the bottle says water quality test and it's got a code on it. It's, uh, one of them Q, what, QCF, whatever the car, codes they are. Is that it? 72 quid and that's it. So if I was to buy this, the cheapest I could find it online was 72 quid. So I guess the test costs a lot of money. I think we better have a read on the back of the box because the instructions are here and find out exactly what we've got to do, haven't we? The instructions on the back say download the water quality test kit app from the Android or the iOS platform. I guess we need to doubt of an app. And it says register your personal details. This is a one off requirement. It says fill the sample water bottle with central heating system water from the radiator bleed point. And then it says secure the lid uh, and avoid spillage in transit. It says scan the barcode on the sample bottle and complete all mandatory fields on the mobile app. It says pack the sample bottle into the free post return envelope provided and post the sample. The status of the samples can be tracked via the mobile app or the online portal. Results, notification and completed test reports are available to view via the mobile app or online portal. Test reports will also be sent via an email notification. And it says interpretation is based on the sample being treated with Fernox products and representatives of the system as a whole. Hmm. So I guess my results will come back as probably no Fernox inhibitor in because we're not putting Fernox inhibitor in. So that's what we've got to do. So now we can get on with it. So come on. So that's the sample bottle. All we got to do now is pour that in there. Make sure the top's screwed on. So the date is Saturday the 10th of September. Send this off now in the prepaid envelope and we'll see what the results come back like and how long they take to get back. Now, uh, today is uh, Thursday the 17th of September and the time is uh, 10 past 1 in the afternoon. We've had a bit of a problem with the app from Fernox. It wouldn't let me register. So I've had to make a couple of phone calls and Fernox have managed to sort out the glitch in their app by their IT guy sending me some link via an email. So thanks to the IT guy from Fernox because he was actually on holiday while he did it. So fair play to the guy. So what it says we need to do is we need to scan this code by pressing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to scan the code. So it's managed to pick the code up straight away. Let's see if it's the same. It is exactly the same. So I guess we press set now. And that's where it's come up. It says next one is customer order reference, your reference against your records. So we'll put Tomcat 1, the boiler manufacturer. It was actually ideal. Boiler serial number. So let's put the boiler serial number in. That's the boiler serial number. Boiler H is that one. Address, enter postcode. I'm going to put our postcode here so the, you don't get the customer's postcode. Oh, uh, it says enter postcode, tap to select. So, flat number. There you go, Tomcat gas training. That's us. There you go. Have you permission? Yes, you certainly have. And we will go submit. So, we've got one in a transit. So, what we've got to do now is we've got to get this. And we've got to get it in our little bag and send it off to Vernox. Now, it is still Thursday the 17th and it is 20 to 8 and I'm at the post box. And I've got a little parcel going to Fernox. So, let's... Uh, Get it in the post box.
well there you go it's now delivered so let's see how long it takes for it to uh, get the results back on the app uh oh don't get picked up until nine o'clock anyway it's gone so let's see what it gets back now just add a ping on my app you can see it's 10 past one and it is monday the 21st so you can see they're just doing the testing there is no results for my sample yet so click on my samples and it says it's testing so you can see 17th of the 9th 20 or when i sent it and we can see it's testing <laughs> the results are in came through at uh, three o'clock yesterday and it's failed. So, got the email from Fernox. <sighs> and it says it's failed. Which is a bit disappointing because to start off with, it's had a filter on that system for looks like a long time. The water quality when we did the turbidity test was very clean at, right at the very beginning. We did drain the full system. We did put cleaning chemicals in we did drop the cleaning chemicals we put more water in we flushed it around again and then we put inhibitor in granted we didn't put furnox in we put a local plumbers merchants branded uh, inhibitor in and it does say when you do the test that it will only be testing for furnox products it says appearance it said recommended levels to maximum and we were zero, zero on the mains water, but then it said sample results three. Now I know we did take the sample from the bleed nipple from the furthest radiator, and it was very aerated, um, because all the air seemed to have gone to that radiator, but, and it was cloudy, you could see in the turbidity test it was cloudy. Uh, so maybe I should have chucked that away and done another test again. Um, it says conductivity, it said mains water 156, and it, um, and it says the results must be more than the mains water. And we've got 331. That's double, isn't it? pH level, it says it needs to be between 6.6 .6 and 9.5. The mains water was 7.1 and the sample water was 7.9. It says alkalinity, it says 300 parts per million maximum for the mains so we've got 51 and we've got 123 for the sample now total hardness it says it needs to be between 50 to 200 parts per million we've got 40 on the mains water and 35 on the sample results how does it know the mains water results didn't send a bottle of mains water don't know how they do that it says hardness deposition it says less than 30%, there's nothing on the mains water, and it says it's 12. Whatever that is. It says aluminium, less than three parts per million, we've got zero. It says copper, less than three parts per million, we've got zero. It says iron, it says less than 80 ppm, we've got one. Now the next one says, I think it says, molybdenum. Molybdenum? Molybdenum? Uh, and it says parts per million, it says depends on the treatment, and there's nothing in the mains water and it says it's 14.00 i've just been informed that it's actually you say it molyb molybdenum molybdenum or whatever so i prefer my word of molybdenum but it's molybdenum and then we've got phosphorus which is parts per million and we've got less than 80 ppms and we've got zero so that was the results what came through now it says down at the bottom it gives its recommendations and it says fernox inhibitor is present in low concentrations so was fernox in there before or is the cheap inhibitor we put in got fernox products in it so it says the fernox inhibitor is absent or present in low concentrations it says the system is at risk of failure due to the presence of debris. Well, the turbidity test passed. It's got a filter on it and it's had a filter on it for a long time, which was dirty, but not, I've seen tons worse. It then says recommendations. It says clean the system with cleaner F3 
Treat with protection F1 or antifreeze protection. And then it says install a filter, but we've got a filter on it. That's the results what we've got from Fernox. Now Fernox are only testing what I've sent them. They're not making these results up, but it's quite disconcerting to think that I thought it was clean. The system looked crystal clear. We'd done what we're supposed to be doing according to the building regs. We've set the sample off just to see how this process goes on. And when the results come back, it does say it's rubbish. So maybe we should use Fernox products if we're going to do the Fernox test, which is obvious to be fair. And if you're doing any other manufacturer's test, then obviously you will be using <laughs> their test kit. Can't we just make a test kit what tests every system? It's the Fernox Express Inhibitor Test Kit. So it has a product number of 62514. It's a test to see if your central heating system has got any inhibitor in it. It will test all Fernox products, but it will also test only molybdate-based inhibitors. I think that's how you say it anyway. So it's an easier and intrusive use. It is quick and a simple test method to establish the presence of the inhibitor within the heating system. So we're basically testing the concentration of this inhibitor and it allows with the compliance of BS7593 2019, the benchmark scheme. And it may also be required by the manufacturers. So inside we have these little strips here. So when used in conjunction with the Fernox Water Test app, we can basically download that from the Apple Store or Google Play. The single usage on-site heating system test can be saved with the app and the laboratory style certificate available to be downloaded or passed by your email to your customer. So this is how we're going to do it. So it says dip the strip into the system water for one second and remove. Number two, it says shake off the excess liquid. And then it says number three, compare the color chart within 10 seconds. So we're gonna compare it with that within 10 seconds. And then it says Fernox protector level should be over 100 ppm. So we should be this, I don't know, is that orange? Anyway, should be this orangey color. And it said the test strip should be less than 100 ppm, add additional Fernox protector. And then it says submit via the Fernox water test app. So we'll look at that in a minute. So let's get a strip out. There's a test strip. It says, dip it in the water for a second, shake off the excess, and then compare with Oops, he says nearly knocking over the turbidity. That's why it's an orange colour. So the levels are definitely over 150 because it's darker than 100 and it's slightly darker than that. So let's test it now with the app. Now, if you haven't got the app, this is the QR code. So basically, if you just get your phone, put it on camera and then put your phone on there and it will automatically take you straight to the app so if you haven't got the app that even takes you to the app store for it so let's have a look at the app let's get back onto the main screen so you can see the main screen so here's the main screen so you can see these are the tests from the other videos i did and you can see it failed the last test so let's have a look at the new one so we go down to the right section and now we can put all the details in so we'll put Tomcat here I'm looking for the boiler which was a valent so there, down at the bottom so we've got valent next one we want to put a serial number in we'll just put one two three four so age of the boiler is between two and ten years so we'll put that in the address so it's OL6 Go down to which one it is, then back down to Tomcat at the bottom. So we now got the address in. We can now take a picture of the sample. So you can see it's actually gone darker now we've gone over the 10 seconds. So there's a picture. 
we'll just use this picture because I can't be bothered taking another one it's only a test so there you go there's a the picture and then we are greater than 150 parts per million and we'll submit it because we've now accepted the people have said we can do it so we can now submit it there you go and it now says we've passed and it stores a picture there for us for the future now let's have a look at the email that Fernox send you after you've completed your test so they send out this standard email but at the bottom of the email is an attachment and if you open the attachment it's pretty much all the information what was on the app so it has the address of the place, it has the um, boiler, how old the boiler is and your results. So you can then email this off to your customer so they have a copy. <laughs>
or the UK. So we're in the UK, so we click on that. Postcode, so because we're here at the center, we're gonna put the postcode in for the center. And it says house number, and then it says find. So we click on find. So it says address notes, which we don't need to do anything with that. So we can just put done. And then it says for us to continue, so we can continue. So it's now saying, is it a new installation, service, retest, repair, or none of the above? So we're gonna put service. So once we've done that, we can click on next. It then says, what type of boiler is it? Combi, standard, it says back, don't know, our system. But it's actually a combi boiler that's attached to it. So once we've done that, we can click on next. It now says, job reference ID option. Um, so if I put Tomcat 1 in there, so it says the boiler serial number is optional, so we don't really need to put that, or we can even press the code and we could actually scan the code, the barcode for the boiler if we wanted to. So we can go on to done and then we can press next. It's now saying is there a filter? Well, yes, there's a filter on there, so we can click on next. It's now saying take a sample of the water, which we have done, and it says we can either do it at the magnet or we can take it at the radiator. We can press continue. It's now saying place a sample against a pale background and take a photograph. Let's take the picture and says continue. So we've now got the picture. It now says is it clear or yellow? Or is it orange or brown? Or is it dark brown or black? Well, to me, it looks clear or yellow. It's actually a yellow color. So I can press that one and press continue. It now says a dip a test strip in the water sample for three seconds of remove. It then says shake off excess water, ensure the test strip is left for one minute before scanning. Scan the test strip between one and two minutes after dipping. Please ensure suitable light location prior to scanning. So basically you can't do it in a loft area or something like that because it's not going to pick it up. So we need to get one of our test strips and we need to dip it into the turbidity tube. I need to get it all the way down in there, take it out, shake it off and place it there. We're gonna be now needing the cat. It now says, oh, it's even got a timer look. <laughs> so we know we can't do it any quicker than we should do. So it says, allow the test strip to dry for 60 seconds for best results. Uh, proceed with the test, leaving no longer than two minutes after dipping. So we'll just wait for the timer to go. You can actually skip this section if you want. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is, it says, place the strip onto the test card and it shows you where to put them. We need to put them in line with the charts. So it now says press continue. It now says hold the square over it. There you go. So it's now come up with the results. It says inhibitor recommendation. It then says corrosion pass, pH pass. So it says insufficient inhibitor detected. Top up required using ADNC1 or equivalent. Ensure to circulate for 30 minutes in the system and test again. Corrosion level is low, no further action required. pH level okay, no further action required. Now, I didn't run the central heating system beforehand because what AD say is to take the sample cold. So yeah, I would have had to sit here waiting for it to go cold, but really, yes, I should have run the central heating system for 15 minutes before I actually took my sample, but I didn't, because I wanted it cold. But anyway, it says press continue. It says write some notes, so we could actually write some notes in here. Press done. And then it says submit to aid it. And it now says our test is completed and then it says email results are done. So I can actually email the results. So I'll email the results to me. Now you've got to make sure you're connected to the internet when you're doing this, otherwise it won't work. And it says email sent successfully. That's done. So press done. It's gone back to the beginning. So if I come out of there, go into my emails and look at that. 
it's done by results. So everything is there. So all the water tests, all the results, even the photograph has been sent via the email. We can also go on the portal now and have a look and see if these results are on the portal because that's where all your stuff is stored when you send it to Edit. I can actually go on to my ProChecker portal now and find out if it's registered it there as well. So I can either do it via this email link they've given me or I could have gone on www.procheck.ad.com. So if I click on the link, it then brings up my dashboard. And you can see on my dashboard, it says total water test one, properties okay zero, properties with recommendations one, properties due test in the next 30 days, and properties with test overdue zero. So if I go back up to my total water test and click on that square, you can see now it's brought up Good Hope House 328 Cross Street with an R meaning recommendations. So if I click on that now, you can see it tells me when I did it, the date, tells me the engineer, the email, the time it was done, the reasons for a service, they said it was a commit, it's got a filter, it's got a job reference number, got the address notes, and then it's actually got the results. It says inhibitor level R, corrosion tick, uh, pH level tick, overall R, and it says insufficient inhibitor detected, top up required using ADMC1 or equivalent, ensure circulate for 30 minutes in the system and test again. Corrosion levels is low, no, uh, no further action required, pH level okay, no further action required. And it even gives a location of the test. How amazing is that? So that's your uh, AD ProChep portal. <laughs>
and not onto the customer's worktops or carpet or whatever. First thing we need to do is fill these cups up with samples of water. So this is our central heating water we've taken from the job from out of the turbidity tube. So I'm just going to fill it up. Right up to the top. And this is for our tap water. Now I have taken a sample of the water from the job. I'm just going to use this bottle. So this is the tap water from the job. There you go, they're f now full. Next, we need to take out one of the test strips and clean it. So we need to get our little sander and we need to make sure we get this steel cleaned up. It doesn't matter if you go over here or clean these little co uh, connectors up, it's, it's not gonna damage it. The actual app will tell you if you've cleaned it enough. We're now going to flick it over and clean the copper side. So hopefully that's clean enough. The reason for cleaning them is so they make a reaction to each other within the solution. So that's how it's going to test it. Let's uh, open the app. Let's go start new test. It says we've got a pack of 10. We've already added the code, so we can press OK. Now you don't even need to put the location of where you're doing the test because it uses GPS off your phone to be able to do it. But if you do need to amend the address, you can just press on this little icon here and you can amend it. We well, now can see it says new system boiler service visit or diagnostic problem solving. So our job was actually this water sample is the test before we installed a new boiler. So we need to click that first one. Next thing we need to do is take the sender unit and the probe and place it into the sender unit and it should start sending a signal so you see it's flashing blue via Bluetooth to the app. Now the sender unit is actually battery operated there's a battery compartment here and it even shows you on the app there that whether the battery is fully charged or not so that's where the battery is stored there. So if I press start it's now found it, so I need to stick it into the water sample and you can see it's gone into the blue here, so that means I've actually cleaned it good enough. If it was in the red, it wouldn't do it, so it's sending a good signal over to the app. It's going to count down for, uh, was it a minute or 30 seconds? So you now can see that that's taken a base measurement. It now says dry the probe and then insert it into the heating system water. So just gonna shake that off. That's all you need to do and then place it into the heating water and press start. We're now seeing if this has got any inhibitor in it and it's counting down for four minutes and we're looking for that needle there to go round to the green section to tell us how much inhibitor we've got. It's also going to give us a graph here to see how much we've got in it. So we've got to wait four minutes now and see whether this needle gets into the green or not. Now this app will also tell you if you've got cleaner in the system or you've got a lot of flux. So it's not just checking inhibitor, it's checking other chemicals also. So now you can see it's automatically told me it's failed. There is not enough inhibitor in there. Now there is some inhibitor in there and that's why there isn't any corrosion in the system. But it's saying it's not enough. It says no corrosion protection found. Add the inhibitor but obviously it's a new system so we're draining the system and we've got to fill it up so once we've done now the installation we can then fill it back up and we can put some inhibitor in it and then we can take another sample and we can see what it says on the next test press ok so you can see it's given us the full test results all the information of everything there and what we've got so we could then send that off to our customer. We can then press this button here 
and then this allows us then to WhatsApp it, email it or text it over to our customers. So if we press done, we're now ready to do the other test. So that's how easy it is to do this test.